Now that the JSA has defeated Perdegaton and saved time from his tyranny, what'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of JSA issue number six and find out together, shall we? So then, as you'll recall, at the end of the previous issue, the events of the main Justice Society book had actually dovetailed very nicely to the big finale that happened over in Stargirl. For those who need a little refresher, Courtney Whitmore had gone to a place called Orphan Island and ended saving up a bunch of time-displaced sidekicks thought forgotten. One of the bigger names amongst these refugees of time was none other than Judy Garrick, aka the secret long-lost daughter of Jay Garrick, who had actually worked with her father under the superhero name The Boom. Now, even though we got a lot of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff going on about who remembers what, the second Jay sees his daughter, he's absolutely overwhelmed, and the two end up embracing each other. In fact, we actually get a little flashback detailing some of The Boom's origin. Apparently, a villain put her through the same accident that gave her dad his powers, and that she actually disappeared only a couple months into her first becoming a superhero. It's also really nice on Courtney's part to get to see this father and daughter reunited, as she obviously has a lot of baggage regarding her own biological father. Now from there we transition on over to Helena Wayne Huntress. We see that Bruce Wayne has actually gone out of his way to set her up with a brand new apartment in New York City so she can be closer to the JSA, and also so he can kind of ignore her existence. In fact, he's telling people that Helena is his cousin and not his time-displaced daughter. Huntress Huntress probably would have put up a fight here, but she's actually happy to not be in Gotham City right now because, hey, she's seen the future and she knows right around now the events of Gotham War happen wherein her mother and father will be at each other's throats. Of course, Helena's even being right here right now and saving her father from what's supposed to be his death made her into a giant walking time paradox, so who the hell really knows about anything anymore? The next big mission for the JSA figurehead seems to be what the hell are they going to do with all of these time-displaced sidekicks as many of them don't actually have a home families, or mentors to go back to anymore, most of them being dead for generations now. The most difficult of all these lost sidekicks, though, is actually Salem the Witch Girl, the former mentee of Dr. Fate Kent Nelson. She gets up to speed on everything that's been happening in the world of Dr. Fate since she's been gone by the new Dr. Fate, Halid, who she positively hates, by the way. Though more than anything, she seems to hate the idea that she's been completely scrubbed from the history books when it comes to Dr. Fate. Hell, people remember the stupid knife wheel Dr. Fate from the 90s, but not her. You might also remember the unresolved plotline that Salem was actually working with Perdegaton, and the heroes don't seem to know that yet, though this issue they seek to imply that maybe the reason she did it is that she's under a curse that Dr. Fate was trying to fix back in his time, but he died before it ever actually worked out. As we learn from Beth Chapel, Dr. Midnight, just housing these kids will be the first of many problems. So many of them never actually got to finish their superhero training and have powers that could make themselves dangerous to themselves and others, meaning that the other heroes of the JSA are going to have to step up like never before to try and get involved. We even get to see Ted Grant Wildcat reappear in this issue and ask what happened to Yolanda, who's obviously still dealing with the fact that she was brought back from the dead using Lazarus Resin. And as I mentioned, all of these outings aren't exactly going to be happy, heartfelt ones. Stargirl takes Ladybug to what's left of her family farm. Even though her own parents died decades ago and the granddaughter who's running the farm now has no idea who this girl girl even is. But hey, just because the people have forgotten doesn't mean the creatures have, as Ladybug ends up running into Michael the Bee, aka the personal bee helper of Red Bee. Yes, this is a real holdover from 1940s and quality comics. No, I don't know how the bee is alive, but I just think it's very sweet that the bee remembers. Now, as the comic winds down, we're actually treated to several more little snapshots of other heartfelt reunions happening all over the DC Universe. I'm actually quite a fan of John Henry Jr. meeting the two steals. John Henry Jr. also says that he's actually his grandfather's brother and that he isn't sure what that makes him, only for Natasha. To say, hey man, that makes us family is what it makes us. Hell, even Dynamite Danny Dunbar gets to be a sidekick all over again, which is a nice little bit of closure from the Lost Children miniseries. Lastly, we check on in with Power Girl and Huntress, who say that, man, this might be the biggest JSA team that they've ever seen. And they They've certainly seen a lot of them over their tenure. Hell, it wasn't so long ago they were the new generation of JSA, the young folks looking to make a name for themselves. Now they're the old folks getting looked up to. Huntress says the talent drive isn't stopping here either. She plans that the future of the JSA will not just be about maintaining legacies, but also about offering redemption to those who need it. And the first name on her list should come as no surprise. Huntress is looking to recruit her good friend Solomon Grundy. And so that was just 
Justice Society of America issue number six, everybody, and overall I thought it was a fun little one and done issue and one that I appreciated all the more because I actually read Stargirl and the Lost Children. If you didn't read that series, I think this issue will still work, just not nearly as well, not given the backstory. I can also appreciate two Jeff Johns essentially saying, okay, I've done my little legacy love letter, I've gotten to write about a bunch of old forgotten sidekicks that people haven't thought of in years, but now I'm planning to actually move the JSA forward and try some new stuff. And yeah, I think that should be interesting, I think it should be a good time. Overall, I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and, you know, help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw. So I want to thank you all and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.